वेलकम टू हेल्थ लाइन टीवी एशिया तेलुगु चैनल आई एम योर होस्ट वर्षा सिंह एंड हियर अगेन आई ब्रिंग यू अनदर स्पेशल गेस्ट हु विल शेयर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हेल्थ इंफॉर्मेशन विद ऑल ऑफ अस यू ऑल नो दैट इन दिस शो इट्स माय गोल टू कीप यू अवेयर गिव यू मोस्ट करंट इंफॉर्मेशन ऑन ऑल द हेल्थ कंडीशंस एट द सेम टाइम गिव यू सम टिप्स and this tips comes from our specialist who are our guest on the show they bring you those tips and advices and suggestions that make you take charge of your health remember when you are watching this show you do have some questions in your head what should i do how do i take care of the situation which is the best way i need to take care of my health what are the preventative measures and what is something that i really need to hear from a specialist who is expert in their field we all know that today we are still struggling with our current pandemic situation we are going to social media listening to news media uh, we are seeking advice from our healthcare provider but there are still some unanswered questions that are still lurking in our mind you must remember dr pooja shah who had visited us in our studio some time back and now it's really a great pleasure of mine to invite her again to discuss a little bit of follow up about covid-19 pandemic dr pooja shah is an infectious disease specialist and she practices at jfk medical center which is hackensick meridian uh, jfk medical center university medical center uh, dr pooja shah is right here with us so please join me in welcoming dr pooja shah welcome dr shah again on healthline thank you so much for having me here and uh, dr shah it seems like i it was just yesterday that i spoke to you and we discussed about um the covid-19 situation and you provided us uh, with great information about safe practices and how to take care of ourselves so we are almost 6 uh, months in pandemic now if you think about we started from march so please share what has changed well once again i want to say thank you for having me um a lot has happened in the last 6 months you know new jersey is still seeing cases but not as high as what it was back in march april may Um when I look at the trends it looks like it's about 400 to 600 this is just average I'm seeing at least within the month of September but you know New Jersey overall compared to the rest of the country is doing a little bit or much better I can say than most of the other states that we're seeing they're having high increase in the cases however even if we're doing much better we still need to practice social distancing wearing masks hand sanitizer because these numbers can change anytime and that's what we have to watch out for carefully there's something that we all need to really pay attention to and from time and again and again uh this uh, suggestion and advice is are going to come from all the healthcare providers because as we see now um countries like germany uh, and uk uh, they are seeing a really rise in their cases as well and in united states especially in new jersey where you and i live uh we have seen some decrease i i would say quite a bit of decrease in patients who are uh, coming to emergency room and uh what our community really needs to know about is why we really need to social distance even now even though there are cases um, they are not severe the virulence if you can throw some light on what is the virulence status of virus uh what are the typical symptoms uh, the patients are presenting with and why we still should be afraid of uh, this covid-19 pandemic even though there are not many patients on ventilator if i believe that is the true scenario right now these are great questions first of all you know we still have the disease covid-19 is still here in our state even though we, our numbers are low it's still here it still gives the virus a chance to still come more rampant. It's very easy. These numbers can change quickly. So that's why if we still practice social distancing, wearing a mask, hand sanitizer, this will help keep our numbers low. And so far we've been doing good, but we have to always remember this can change very quickly. So that's why it's 
still, and I stress the importance of still doing the, you know, wearing the mask, social distance. If you come in contact with somebody known with COVID-19, self-quarantine is key. You know, stay away from everyone for at least 14 days for your protection and other people's protection because this virus is still can pass along to other people. As of now, yes, there are less people on the ventilators, but we do still see um, symptomatic COVID-19 patients and asymptomatic COVID-19. I am seeing a little bit more of asymptomatic patients. Maybe they come through the hospital for some other reason, for other health reasons, but everyone who comes through the hospital still gets swapped and get checked um, for COVID-19. And we do see positive cases. Um, so we just keep a close monitor on them. Um, there are still patients that are getting um, very sick from COVID-19 that are that can lead to being on the ventilator. Um, luckily, it's not the same as it was back in March and April, but like I always say, anything can happen and things can change very quickly. And Dr. Shah, I have um, another question for you. We all know that flu season is just around the corner and our community members who are really not aware of the symptomatology, the difference between whether they are experiencing uh, COVID symptoms or they are typically feeling the flu-like symptoms. So when we have this combination of two viruses attacking us at the same time, what are some guidelines that you can uh, share with our viewers so that they do not get panicky and start running to emergency room when they are having typical flu symptoms? At the same time, they do not feel just relaxed and stay at home thinking, oh, I have flu, while actually what they're experiencing is COVID symptom. So, you know, the symptoms of the flu and COVID-19 are actually very similar. Both exhibit fevers, fevers and chills, shortness of breath, sore throat, stuffy nose, um, body aches, headache. Um, at this time. So sometimes it might be very difficult to distinguish between the flu and COVID-19. And if that's the case, it's important to either call your physician or come to the ER. The main difference, you know, that you might see more with COVID-19 than the flu is taste, change of taste and smell. That is not seen in flu patients. That's mostly seen in COVID-19. But all the other symptoms do overlap. And now it's flu season starting. I emphasize to get the flu shot because at least it will help decrease your chances of getting the flu and you'll know. The chances, you know, it's, we are getting better with testing people with COVID-19 and flu. Um, anybody that comes to the hospital, I will check for both because it's not, the symptoms are very, they overlap very easily, but I think it's very important to get the shot and to, um, if you're in doubt, just call your healthcare provider. Okay, I think that was a great suggestion so that, um everyone can really take care of themselves and not just stay uh, relaxed and uh, not stay ignorant. My uh, Another question to you was, Dr. Shah, that how would you recommend getting tested? Because we know that there are some patients who will be symptomatic and they really want to know and get the test done. And now I believe that there is a recommendation to do both uh, COVID as well as flu swab so that we can differentiate between two conditions. But then there are some patients uh, or some community members who have no symptoms at all, and they really don't know whether they are positive or negative. So this is a conundrum that many people are dealing with right now. Well, at this point, the beauty is that testing is available all throughout New Jersey. Um, you know, New Jersey has a COVID-19 website, which allows you to tell you, you place your zip code in, and it gives you all the local testing sites. Um, some of the towns and um, cities actually have local centers set up for um, residents of their township to get tested. There's also um, pharmacies such as CVS, Rite Aid, and Walmart where you don't need a prescription where you can go and get tested. And lastly, our commercial labs such as Quest or LabCorp, you will need a um, prescription for it, but they also test for COVID-19. Now, if you have symptoms and you want to know, I highly recommend getting tested. Now, for the asymptomatic patients, you know, it's hard. Unless you know you came in contact with somebody with COVID-19 recently, um, whether, you know, if you went out one day and then someone told you, yes, there was, um, I have COVID, 
you know, I would highly recommend getting tested even though you're asymptomatic, just so you know you have the disease. And a lot of people present with asymptomatic, they don't have symptoms, but you can still pass the disease to somebody else. So that's why it's important to know if you have COVID-19 or not. Now, if you are asymptomatic, you didn't have any exposure or anything, and you still want to get tested, now it is available, so you have that option. But I just highly recommend people who are symptomatic or any exposure or in a high-risk situation, then get tested. Exchange? Yen with well rupee la balance, ma'am. Oh. You wanna cut it, ma? Yen with well me ke vasta hai. Yes, ma'am. Me on ke along hallmark nine one six gold ne amutaun. Inka me ko durkin di hundred percent exchange value. Wow. Quality. It is Malabar promise. Promise is a promise. Idi ma hero aludu kosam fitga unton di. Perfect ka fitau unton di. Idi mine diamond. 100% quality sir prati mine diamond natural inka mem 28 quality test lu chestam 28 test la prati diamond jewelry tho paatu international lab certificate kuda kallu muskuni mi hero kosam vajralana teeskondi idi malabar promise promise is a promise I believe that there is also a quarantine guideline based on whether you're symptomatic or asymptomatic and positive or negative. So I think once uh, we encourage all our community members to get tested first, at least you know where you stand and that way you can practice your self-quarantine uh, guidelines, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, if someone is asymptomatic, and negative uh, does this person need to quarantine themselves so if you're asymptomatic and negative and you have not had any exposure to COVID-19 but you have to be very sure you don't have any exposure to COVID-19 whether it's going to certain places that are high risks or um, coming in contact with somebody then I recommend that if you're negative and asymptomatic it's okay to go out just wear a mask and you know keep your distance of six feet now if you're asymptomatic and tested negative but you came in contact with somebody with COVID-19 then I highly urge to quarantine for 14 days at least because you know the incubation of this disease is 2 to 14 days and now they're saying maybe 21 days but um, if you're asymptomatic 14 days is enough and you know don't realize you might get tested let's say you got exposed on day one and then you decide to get tested on day three. You could be negative, but then there's a high chance a week later you can become positive and you don't even know. And that's why we say to quarantine at least for 14 days for the safety of yourself and other people. And the stop because this is how we'll stop the spread of the disease. You know, and now we're seeing more and more asymptomatic COVID-19 patients, and this is how it's going to start to spread very fast, and then our numbers will start to go up again. I, I think you made such an important point that just because you are asymptomatic and you are negative, that doesn't mean that you relax and stop taking all the precautionary measures to socially distance, uh, not wearing masks. So bottom line is, no matter what, you have to wear a mask, you have to keep six feet of distance, and you have to continue to sanitize your hand uh, till we get over uh, this uh, spread in this pandemic. And there will be uh, time. We all are waiting for that time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Shah, and if you can um, uh, share something about uh, the patients that you have treated uh, so far, uh, what is the most recommended treatment right now for patients who are actually getting treated for COVID-19? As of now, for the COVID-19 treatments, they're about, um, we have plasma is one option. Um, basically, plasma takes antibodies from somebody with known COVID-19, and we transfuse it into a patient with an active COVID-19 infection. Remdesivir, which is um, an antiviral medication that we're using, and um, recent studies have shown that it helps bring down the more 
um, left to stay in the hospital, and now it's emergency use, so it's run by the FDA. And there are a couple other treatments that are out there um, that are still, everything's still experimental, but the only two that is emergency use by the government through FDA is plasma and remdesivir. And then if there's a suspicion of co-bacterial infections, we do give antibiotics and steroids is also what we give. They're recommending dexamethasone now um, for certain patients with COVID-19. But with that say, we also look, is the patient symptomatic or asymptomatic? And then we decide to treat. If they're symptomatic, then yes, treatment's given. They are symptomatic, it just depends on the case and up to the physician whether they will treat the patient or not, depending on what they came in for and what they're worried about at that time. Because most patients who are asymptomatic, they do very well and they um, are able to leave the hospital or they're at home, but some cases will require treatment. So this is really up to the discretion of the medical team and the ID physicians on the case. Yeah, what I hear from you is, Dr. Shah, that uh, there are COVID patients uh, who received treatment and they did go home. Uh, at the same time, there were some who did not survive. And uh, it depends on the comorbidity and what kind of other conditions they have. And there is no straight formula to say who is going to have severity of symptom and who is not going to have severity of symptom. So the bottom line is that we all need to really protect ourselves and just make sure that we keep that virus at bay. And I, I believe it's a challenging time right now because we are still trying to find out the course of this disease, uh, how it actually originates and where it is going to go. So it's all uh, in all these unpredictable circumstances. It's really nice to hear from a specialist like you uh, that the first thing to do is just keep the virus at bay stay socially distanced and take care of yourself or have safe practices. Uh, so elaborating a little bit further uh, on this uh, social distancing and uh, staying away from the virus, um, what would you recommend to our viewers who are parents of small children? Uh, some of them might be going to school. Uh, some of them might be having a school at home. Uh, and it, this is a challenge that uh, almost every parent is facing, uh, not just in New Jersey, but also in entire country. And they really need to know um, how, uh, how long do I have to do this? So it is a very challenge with the schools. I know everybody's having their challenges um, every day. As of now, you know, everything is set by the government about the school or, you know, either the state or uh, federal government about their practices. Main thing is to make sure if your kids are going to school, whatever the plan is set by the school, you know, make sure you encourage them to wear their masks, keep their distance from, you know, students in the classroom. I think when they go outside, you know, whatever set by the school policies, they are able to um, run around and things like that. And the key is the hand sanitizer. And then when they come home, you know, just change your kids clothes and you know take a shower if need to that way you know you feel that they're more safe that way it is hard to say what's going to happen as long as this virus is here right now the main thing is we have to keep the social distance whether it's at school or outside at restaurants um malls anywhere that you know everything that's open now even the gyms is important but it's just it's going to be a challenge that we all have to take together and that we're going to have to see what happens and once I think the numbers and everything gets better and that things change, I think then all the policies will slowly change as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Shah. Uh, as the weather is changing uh, and the winter is approaching, you know, it's almost like winter is coming. Um, and we have to get prepared that we will be more inside um, and there will be more people in one room. And the way you said social distancing is going to be the answer. Is there any other message that you would like to share with the audience? Uh, I know we've talked about social distancing a lot. Uh, what about winter-related diseases, common cold, or if they have uh, any other mimicking diseases that is not COVID or not flu? So, yeah, with winter around, you know, we do have other diseases out there, a lot of viral infections. The minute you feel like you have a fever, cough, body aches, 
something where you don't, you know, it's not your norm. One, I would say um, to be safe, you should social isolate in the house if you can and talk to your um, physician because this way your physician can get you the testing you need just to see where you're at because it's going to be hard to distinguish COVID-19 from other viral infections. They're very overlapping. I mean, you know, we have other strands of coronavirus as well. So, you know, it's so easy to, you don't know right away from just your symptoms alone, do you have COVID or do you have another viral infection? So I think the main thing is, you know, take precautions in the house. You know, if you need to wear a mask, you know, wash your hands, hand sanitize, wipe down the counters. You know, all those things are very important and contacting your physician so your physician can see what further testing is needed. So that way we can know what you have exactly. And sometimes, you know, a lot of viral infections we can't diagnose because we don't have testing for each one. But at least the main ones like the flu, COVID, RSV, rhino, there's so many, the common cold, all those we can at least rule, rule out or rule in based on um, the testing itself. Thank you, Dr. Shah. So from what we had conversation so far, uh, I'm just summarizing. Uh, number one, wear your mask, wash your hands. Uh, stay six feet away uh, if you have any symptom and if you feel that you really need to go to emergency room and there are severe symptoms, don't wait, uh, get tested. And also, um, if you have any doubt about any of your symptoms that you do not understand, uh, then go to your provider, uh, healthcare provider who will guide you. Uh, and if you have any other information that is needed, uh, I believe that your recommendation would be to go to nearest hospital, um, the health center. And there is multiple um, uh, informational website, but uh, as you recommended, uh, the nj.gov and COVID-19. I think that has uh, most succinct information. Is there anything, uh, any other resources that you can uh, point fingers to? I mean, the main things for New Jersey is definitely the two the websites you recommended. Um, of course, we have our CDC and WHO websites. But for best information about New Jersey, those are the websites to use because that will give you all the information. And they have a lot of good information there with all these updates we need to know as well. Because also we know now that there's a quarantine list for like different states, like if you're traveling from other states. And that changes every week. So it's good to follow that as well. I know we have a lot of visitors come from out of states and we, you know, it's hard. We've been quarantined for so long. So, you know, going back to normal life is not as easy as it sounds. And, you know, there's a lot of precautionaries we need to take. So it's important to know about other states, what's going on in the country, because, you know, those numbers could, will eventually can, you know, affect everyone at one point. Or, you know, those are important things to keep in mind. And so far, it's nice to see New Jersey is doing better than compared to other states, compared at least from what we saw back in March and April. So there are some good changes coming, but we, like I always keep emphasizing, is the need to do uh, social distancing, wearing a mask, hand sanitizer, hand washing, knowing where you're going, knowing what are the policies, like just simple as going to eating at a restaurant, it's always good to know what are their COVID-19 policies, because things like that will make a difference. And as long as everybody's compliant and doing what they need to do, things can change for the better, but it will take some time. Yeah, um, what I hear from your um, advice is that just be patient uh, because it is going to end. Uh, it will end at one point, but in the meantime, we all need to be safe. Uh, it is better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. So thank you for your time, uh, Dr. Shah, and thank you for sharing this follow-up uh, about COVID-19. It's such a great pleasure to have you every time uh, on Healthline on TV Asia Telugu channel. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So we uh, listened to Dr. Pooja Shah and we learned more about COVID-19. And it um, is really important for all of us to understand that taking care of ourselves, uh, prevention is the best key for preventing COVID-19. So don't forget to wear your mask, uh, as Dr. Shah said. Uh, keep safe distance, stay six feet away. And always sanitize your hand. Just be aware of your surrounding. And stay healthy. And that's why we are talking to you. Stay healthy. Take care of yourself. Um, I'm saying bye. Your host, Varsha Singh, for now. But I'll be back again uh, with another special guest in this show. Keep watching Healthline on TV Asia Telugu channel.